All right, everybody, welcome. Good evening, good evening to the Let's Stay Together talk show. Your host, Reverend Rick McCain, along with my baby, my girl, my boo, Brenda McCain, uh, 2024. We're going to re, uh, remit the titles, but so I'm going to start now. Uh, how you doing, baby? Baby with no titles, how you doing? Brenda with titles is doing very well. Oh, that's good. You, you, you have a good Thanksgiving? I did. It went by so fast. I had a good one. I, I'm hoping everybody had a great Thanksgiving and if everybody's safe and enjoyed being with each other. We had a great time here in the Chicago. And the McCain household, it was here, and it was, it was nice. It's always good when you can eat some food and you don't have to go anywhere afterwards. Yeah, but you gotta I mean, clean up. Yeah, you gotta clean up, but you don't have to do it th that day. I mean, you know. Yeah. I mean, the people who come here, they just get a chance to go home. But you be so tired, you don't want to do that. When you just go in upstairs and lay down, you know, it just felt so good. So for all of those people who cooked, thank you for being, uh, you know, the hostess with the mostess taking care of your families and friends. And I hope everyone had a joyous and wonderful Thanksgiving. We're going to be talking about that because we're going to be talking about the goodness of God. And um, this is going to be also our last live show for the year because we're going to do pre-recorded shows that we're going to send over to Kenny and for December. And in starting in 2024, we will be expanding the show to um, from 7 to 9. We're going to add an extra... 30 minutes to the end uh, because we're going to be getting back that time. Uh, before I take it back, I'll add more to it uh, because God has really been good to me and we're hoping that you will also join us as well. We're going to have the Emmy nominated <coughs> producer <laughs> uh, still with us, um, Kenny Crawford. Uh, it is a blessing to have someone like him on this show with us and he's going to get more involved next year you might even see him you might even get a chance to see, what is that one person that you don't get a chance i'm not talking about jesus by the way there was a mythical character that comes in and out i can't think of who it is right now but in and out of where you know he just you know you you some people can see him some can i can't think of it i'm getting old yeah but uh -huh. you might even actually get a chance to see mr crawford um, you will hear him hear and see him times uh, next year. To, you know, you'll hear him. <laughs> but you might Once actually get a chance to get him here. I mean, we're still working on the contract to get him in there. He's almost like you know, what the Cubs are trying to get with Otani. He's going to cost a lot of money, but we're working <laughs> to get him out here. Although if you don't watch sports, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But we're going to have a great time up in 2024. I want to give a special prayer out to the Carter family with the death of Rosalind Carter, Jimmy Carter's uh, wife. Uh, funeral processions were today, or, and um, all the uh, first ladies were there. Even Melania Trump, which was interesting wow. that she was there. Yeah, she was there. Uh, I don't know if that was just the sisterhoods who invited her, trying to keep things together. I mean, she hasn't been around doing the Trump stuff a lot, but she did come to this, and so it was interesting. So we're giving our prayers out to the uh, Carter family. Uh, Jimmy Carter and, and losing his wife, Rosalind uh, Carter, um, who was a great, great part of his presidential candidacy and presidency during the time that he was there. Unfortunately, he only served one term because of the Iran uh, controversies that happened that lasted about 400 and some odd days, which kind of ended his presidency. But a good man. I got a chance to spend some time with him with Habitat and Humanity. Him and Rosalind went out there when I went to Eagle Butte, South Dakota. I think that was in um, that was in the seventies, wasn't it? Because uh, we get married. No, it was in the nineties. I'm sorry, the seventies. In the nineties, um, when we were it was getting married. Um, wonderful person, enjoyed being out there. They were really kind and nice, and so give me my condolences. You got anything you want to add, babe? Not to that, but um, condolences is for the family. I do want to say this is the last time I will be announcing this that your girl Brenda is being honored on the 9th. And since this is our last show of the year, um, hopefully everything will go well with the Emerald City Evening of Empowerment and Elegance for Women Only. I am honored to be honored. The next thing. Oh, um, let me say, what, wait a minute. You know, I won't get a chance to hear this 
any more on the radio right, at all? Son, you're happy. Oh my God, I, I'm I'm just so disappointed. I know you are, boo. <laughs> I know. The next one is today is Giving Tuesday Toy Christmas Drive from November the 28th to December the 23rd from boys and girls from birth to 12 years old. This is, I believe, done by our girl Risa Risa Jenkins Treasured Gifts. And um, they always do something spectacular. But if you're looking to give, you could give through Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And um, they're looking for dials, cars, electronics, puzzles. It's out there on Facebook. I thought I posted it to my page and let's stay together talk page. If not, I'll put it out there again. But check that out because last year it was beautiful. Okay, so this is in the Chicagoland area, correct? Yes, Chicagoland area. And they can go online to donate? Mm, they're giving you a drop-off place, I believe. Um, I mean, it's, it's nice that this, if they can only do it physically, they need to know that this is in the Chicagoland yeah, area. Chicago area, 171563 Kesey Avenue is in Hazelcrest, a drop-off location at Lux 175, once again, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yeah, and that's a, a nice thing that she's doing. Um, for those of y'all, Risa was one of our uh, monthly uh, persons that came on the air, uh, did some great uplifting uh, conversations, and so hopefully that event will go great. Wasn't that something we did last year? Didn't we get involved in that last year? Yeah, we went to it. Yeah, that was one all kind of nice gifts. I still uh, wear my T-shirt, Ingle, mm, Inglewood. <laughs> uh, so uh, we're gonna go on with our show for the day. What we got, babe? For tonight, for Christian Real, we have "You've Been Good to Me." Yeah, and speaking of the Christmas, I mean, that's Christmas, not Thanksgiving holidays, uh, where we always give thanks. It just reminded me about how this year is going to end and how thankful we should all be uh, to God for him being so good to us throughout the year. There's been so many tragedies that have happened in this year. You've got a situation where Ukraine is fighting with, um, with Russia, uh, Hamas with the Israelites. You know, there's so much, you know, war and violence in the world and yet um, we've been blessed by the Lord and he has taken care of us and provided for us, um, you know, through all the trials and tribulations. Even if you went through some hard times, you know, thank God because you are still here because even though the darkness tried to overcome you, it was because of the light of the world who died on the cross for the remissions of our sin and you accepting him as your Lord and Savior you are still here. And so James 1 and 17 says, every good and perfect gift comes from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadows of turning. There is no change in him. And so we're thankful to God. And so we're just going to have like an impromptu talk about just, you know, the goodness of God and how good he's been to us. And, and just share a little bit about, about that. And, you know, I, I'm going through, and we're going to talk about this in 2024. We're actually going to have a young lady that's going to come on the radio show named Nicole uh, through the prostate um, cancer that I'm going through. Um, another test, you know, for that. And um, we're going to talk about that for men. So, ladies, you're on that. You know, listen up for that because it's going to come, I think, the second week of uh, January uh, and all the things, the side effects that comes with that because the prostate does have a lot of side effects or things that can cause issues with men. Um, and in some of the cases, it could be performance issues as well. And so we want to dab, you know, dab into that and, and get into those taboo hidden things that men don't like to talk about because, you know, we're too proud and kind of understand what you can do when situations like that happen. So we've got a lot of things that we're going to be thankful, you know, for. But, you know, I'm going through that. Um, hopefully, I'll get some results to say that I won't have to take any tests for another nine months to a year. Uh, but I've been very thankful of, of God's goodness 
because when I found the information out, for those of you who have probably never heard the show, I found out the information on my birthday uh, that I had prostate cancer. And uh, since then, you know, it was a trying situation at the beginning, but I've always had faith in the Lord God, Jesus Christ, that his will will be done. And it's been a, a good journey um, where the cancer, you know, the prostate cancer is, is like less than 10%, which is a blessing. Uh, and we're hoping it's going to stay that way. But, babe, you know, it's something that I'm thankful for because, you know, it was a trying, it was a trying year. You know, I had that uh, sciatic nerve pain that seemed like it lasted for like nine months. I had an injury on my arm. I mean, there's a lot of things that was going on um, that, you know, I could have just questioned why. And we talked about that last year. But it's just so good how God will take you through these journeys and, uh, and you will experience them. And even though you don't want how you get stronger because of them, not weaker. And it's just a blessing to know that with God, you know, all things are possible. And having that faith to know that God can do all things. And I was telling a young lady that yesterday, you know, when God says he can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can actually think, why should I trouble myself about worrying about something when I can give it to God and he can think about things that my mind can't even comprehend. It's, it's just a blessing to know that I can take it to the Lord and leave it there and, and know that the goodness of God will protect me. So in my mind, that's the goodness of God. And I'm just glad that God is good. I'm glad he is awesome because what you went through, like I, I told my story with that before too, that, when Rick wasn't getting upset and I was in a frazzle-dazzle state, God had to pull me back and tell me to observe your husband and you go off of what he's doing. If I'm trying to be his protector and keep him prayed up, he the one had to bring me to the level where he was at. So I love that God is that good, that awesome, that would take your situation and keep you positive in it for you to help other people. And that's why I was telling people, whatever journey God got you going through, it's a lesson learned, and he's going to take you through it, and you're going to be able to help people. Like you said, the second Tuesday of next year, this is going to be a big one, because we know you men do not like to listen, and you don't go to the doctor. But to have someone on that other half to work with us and to come on and share this is important. Get tested. Go, you know, something just doesn't seem right. Go. Because women, we know we go for any little I got a new pimple, a new mole. What is this? But I do commend you for being proactive with this. I mean, you know, it's just so, you know, the obedience and the trust and the faith in God. And I will say, because I'm reading this with uh, David had wrote in Psalms 27, 13. I'm going to read that like an NIV version, I'm going to read the King James. He says, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is him saying, I, I, I would have lost it. But having faith in God that know that he's going to be there for me while I'm alive, the land of the living, I, I can continue to go on. Me, myself, my strength would lose faith. I would lose hope. I would have lost heart. I would have lost it all. And some of you are out there right now, you're going through some situation where you are losing faith. You are losing hope. You're, you're doubting. But David said, I would have lost it unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. And I, and I do like uh, the King James Version of this when it says, um, I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It says, wait on the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait on the Lord. That's verse 14 of that. Just, that's the key. I remain confident in this. This is what I love. The confidence that God can what you can't. And, and, and to be able to take your can't and put it in the hands of the one who can. I mean, that re that's, that's reversing every trial and tribulation, every trouble, every traumatic problem or, 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 or something you're dealing with. 
you now have the option to take it and give it to God and be confident in this. As he says, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, that I know with confidence that I will see God doing great things for me while I'm alive. And then verse 14 says, wait for the Lord. That is one of the hardest things that we do when we're going through our darkness. We'll go to the Lord. No, no, no. Let me. Christians, oh, yeah. Let us go through some problems. Ooh, you know, I, girl, I'm just, I'm just praying to God for, for this, and I'm praying to, and I'm going to let you know how spiritual I am because I need to share with you the problems that I'm going through, and I want you to feel that I'm still spiritual while I'm going through it, but it's hard to wait because God's time is not our time. But we'll say all these wonderful, pleasant things, but we're not willing to wait. That was the fastest 15 minutes I've ever experienced in my life. Because I just looked up when I was up there and, and almost prayer to God and looked up and I saw Leslie up there. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm praying to God and Leslie. Goes, is she the reincarnation? <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but we're going to get into our our um, special guest. Now, this special guest uh, is going to be our first special guest for the 2024 season. Uh, this is a young, young lady that I love having on the show because Leslie is just so sound and her answers and her voice is so therapeutic and soothing. It, it helps me when I go through trouble troubles with Brenda. I mean, you don't know how many times I got to call her I, I, I'm gonna interrupt. And, 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 and say, help me with this I'll woman. I'll be calling her. <laughs> boop, 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 text her. Hey, we need help over here. No, no, no. No, we. <laughs> no, no, I need, need help. help. Help me. You know. You know this girl is going crazy, and 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 she'll just calm me down. She and sure do. Help me out, and you know, help me through this thing. But you know we're, what? We're on joking. A serious, <laughs> no. On a serious, I'm gonna give you help. But on a serious note, welcome back, darling. You are still you. in our prayers, okay? I don't want to announce your business, but you just still in our prayers. Well, just say I'm still in your prayers. Just that's that's good enough. Okay. Go ahead. Thank we you. love her. We have back with us this beautiful, vivacious woman that know how to calm my husband down. Well, I don't have to say Yomi Koremiko. Oh, I can Lord, say, please. I can say, Psycho Jesus Christ, thank you for my therapist. At El Holly <laughs> Circle, the lovely, beautiful, vivacious, I'll say all of that because we love you, Leslie Holly. Welcome back, girl. Thank you. Today, my voice isn't as soothing. Um, I think we a cold That's okay. and I need my hot water, but we will make the best of it. Amen. It oh, sounds cute and raspy. I like that. And our topic for tonight is boundaries for the holidays. It's about to be on. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep boundaries for the holidays. See, she pushing me already. Uh -huh. Y'all can't. If y'all on Soar Radio, two times Stellar Award winning for best internet station of the year, just join us on Facebook so you can see the crazy Brenda and, <laughs> and Leslie helping us. So go ahead, uh, my therapist, help us today. Uh -huh. Sure, sure. So, and I don't mind sharing um, this holiday season, I lost my father. And, um, you know, so I want to preface it with that just to say the holiday season can be a really hard time. For a lot of people, um, especially a lot of us who have lost loved ones, the holiday season is a time where we reflect on that. You know, people that have come in and out of our lives, um, who's accounted for, who is not, uh, dreams unrealized, things of that nature. Um, you know, there's a lot of studies that show that during the holiday times, people's mental illness and their conditions get worse. The National Alliance of Mental Health found that actually 64% of people with any kind of mental illness issues during the holidays, they report that their conditions have gotten worse. And then there was another study in 2021 by a telehealth provider that said that three to five, three in five Americans 
feel that their mental health is negatively impacted by the holidays. So we really want to look at this because 60% 60 of those people said that their anxiety increased and 52% of those people said that their depression increased in the holiday season. So, you know, this is a real thing that a lot of us are dealing with around the holiday season. And one of the things that can help us take care of our mental health and choose ourselves first is setting healthy boundaries. And I know you guys have heard me talk about this with my clients it's in particular, how to set boundaries, why it's important to set boundaries. And so as we go into 2024, since we'll be taking a little bit of a break and I'll see you guys in the new year, I really want people to reflect on boundary setting and why it's important and how to do, how to set boundaries. So first, first thing that we wanna remember, when people resist our boundaries, it's confirmation that we need a boundary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When people are resistant to, you know, listen, I feel a certain kind of way about this. And we start to communicate that when people resist, that lets us know we're doing the right thing, right? Because people should allow us to have our own autonomy, to be in relationship with others. We should be allowed to have our own autonomy. That's important. So when you're setting boundaries, you want to be clear concrete and consistent. It's not time to beat around the bush about what you expect or what you don't expect or how you want to be treated. Many of us deal with things like, well, are you going to bring somebody next year? Or who are you dating? Or are you going to have a baby? Or are you going to lose that weight? Yeah. Y'all bought the back, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, they Whatever are. the main point is, Prepare yourself to have a statement to say, you know, at this time, I don't want to talk about that. I'd rather talk about something else. I'd appreciate if you respect my, my privacy. When people resist that, simply just repeat yourself. Repeat yourself over and over. I would just appreciate it if you respected my privacy, okay? People don't have to like it, but this is about you taking care of yourself. Learn to stop apologizing Say thank you instead. A lot of us, and myself included, you know, being the baby of the family, I apologize a lot. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, my apologies. It's not helpful. Say thank you. Thank you for pointing that out for me. Thank you for helping me with that. Thank you for making that clear. It's a way of joining in and not making yourself look small, but saying thank you. I appreciate that. I receive that. Instead of, oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. And then what comes with that? A lot of that negative self-talk. So we want to kind of change the way we talk. Learn to say no. Mm. No is a complete sentence, okay? If you're having trouble saying no around something or there's certain people in your family that you find when you're around them, it's hard to say no. It's hard to set boundaries. We need to see about that. What is it about those particular persons or people that make it hard for us to say no to? Do they remind us of someone? Is there anxiety that they're bringing up? Where do we feel that in our bodies? And why is that happening? We have this thing called transference that happens when we have an interaction with someone and the person necessarily hasn't done anything to us to not for us not to like them or for them to make us feel anxious, but for whatever reason, when that person is around us, we're anxious or we're irritable and we don't know why, that's called transference. Why? Because that person reminds us of someone else. <laughs> mm. That person may remind us of our grandma. That person may remind us of our ex-partner. That person may remind us of that best friend we had that the friendship ended terribly. relationships with these new people, we're transferring these interactions that aren't fair to us and aren't fair to them. So it starts with us, with the boundary setting, with how we show up, with being self-aware of how people affect us, right? Because I have many clients that are powerhouses, they're professional and their professional life, they have no trouble saying no, they have no, no trouble setting boundaries at work, 
But when it gets to Thanksgiving dinner or the Christmas holiday, <laughs> when when Papa asks for something, or you know, when Papa makes a comment about their weight, they just freeze. They're not able to transfer those skills that they have with Papa, right? So why is that happening? We really need to do a deeper dive. What is it about this interaction that's making it difficult to say no? What is it about this interaction that I need to change? What can I control on my part so that I can set health, healthy boundaries? And then lastly, excuse yourself if needed. You know, a lot of us feel, I always tell my adult clients, when you're home for the holidays, if it's a toxic environment, it's okay to leave. <laughs> it's okay to stay at an Airbnb. It's okay to make sure you rent a car this time. So if you want to go for a drive, or you need to get a hotel real quick that you can. We oftentimes go back into our younger selves when we go home and feel like, well, I just, I have to do this. I have to be here. I have to endure this. You do not, you do not. <laughs> so it is okay to excuse yourself if you know you're feeling like your boundaries are really being compromised, if your mental health is being compromised, if your mental well-being is being compromised and you're uncomfortable, it's okay to say, you know, I have to excuse myself. Either I'll be back tomorrow, I'll be back later this evening, or maybe well, I'll be I'm back. Not come back. Here. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And um, that's completely okay. Um, a lot of us don't realize that, that we actually have choice. We actually have choice. So those are my key points for the holidays on how to set boundaries because we have to take care of ourselves. You know what, this, um, when you was talking about transferring, your paper. transferring emotions, it brought me back to a situation that happened to me um, at a funeral. A cousin that I, he was annoying to me when I was growing up. And the minute I seen him, it was like those emotions just came flooding back because I haven't seen him in decades. And he was like, why are you being so mean? <laughs> when I was younger, I was scared of him. And the way he used to try to scare me all the time, I just looked at him and, and we was at his mother's funeral. And I said, don't do that. And when you said that, I'm like, wow, I was transferring those emotions to people who reminded me of him. And that was just something I had to go, why am I doing that? That person didn't even do nothing to me, but they reminded me of this individual, but I'm grown now. And I said, no to him. Don't talk to me that way. Don't play with me that way. And he said, Ooh, you grew up to be me. No, I grew up. <laughs> it's like, I don't have to take this stuff no more. So thank you for saying that. Cause the first I was thinking, man, that was me a couple of months ago, <laughs> like going back to that little girl. So afraid to say no or anything to that individual. So absolutely. You. Yeah. And it's it's healing to course correct those relationships and remind ourselves what's happening for us in those because that that cousin lived rent free in your head. Yep, and he needs to go. I need to evict him. He gotta go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that so, rent free no more. So here's rent something I always think is very yeah. interesting. Um, we always say that no is a complete sentence. I never hear anybody say about yes that way. <laughs> It's like, you never hear yes, and it's a complete sentence too, but I understand the no, but I want to go back to the thank you, because I have to admit, uh, Leslie, I used to say a lot of thank yous to people when they said something I didn't like, but I was being facetious, you know, mm. I'm like, oh, well, thank you. You don't like me? Well, thank you, you know, because I really didn't care, <laughs> and I don't think, that's not the way you're saying that, uh, the way I was doing it, but what happens when you are doing that in a facetious, I don't care kind of methodology, does that really hurt you when you do that? Well, it's interesting that you say you don't care. It sounds like you do care. There's a part of you that does care. Mm -hmm. Because if you really didn't care, you wouldn't feel that frustration. You wouldn't feel that negative feeling, right? You would just say, okay, well, that's okay. I'm not for everybody. And, you know, I hope, I, I wish you well, right? Well, basically, it was because I was just at that time a very sarcastic person. You're saying it. <laughs> I'm just time? being. I'm not. Huh? Am I saying about that time? Girl, shut up. No. Uh, she, 
She said, you say that bad like I'm still sarcastic. I I mean, to be honest with you, I there was a time that I cared, but I built up that mechanism of saying thank you to offset the care. And mm-hmm. I would be very facetious, like, oh well, thank you that you don't like me. You know, it, it didn't because it was like it was always a way of protecting myself, but yeah. it didn't sound like I was necessarily dealing with the issue the way that it would help to the, in the communication with that individual. Absolutely. It's, it wasn't healing. It was a protective factor, but it wasn't healing you. It wasn't just that full acceptance of it's okay for people not to like me. It's okay that I'm not for everyone, right? That that's yeah. okay to accept that piece. So what I'm hearing is maybe over time you've learned to do that though now. It just, it doesn't really affect you in the same way that you. you no, okay. I mean, I mean, there's a part of me that still doesn't care. <laughs> and I mean, this is Christian real. We're always honest. I just, like you said, the guy was living in rent free in her head. I just removed, you know, I don't, I don't allow people to do that anymore. I mean, I do know that, you know, when you were talking about the, the, the strong people, um, there's sometimes that people will say things to you that you will you will fight back on, but if they say something to you like, you know, it happened to me on Thanksgiving. I'm not gonna say a name, but this person tapped me on my stomach and talking about you need to lose some weight, mm. and I'm like, uh, I didn't like that, uh, but I didn't say anything about that, and so I, I, I you know, just say thank you. I no, I'm just gonna say. Shut your no. <laughs> you know, I, I you know, I didn't deal with that in an appropriate way because, you know, I think an avoidance sometimes is not really dealing. And you said, you know, it's okay to excuse yourself. You know, it's okay to say, you know, you know, step away from things like that. And, and sometimes you just need to step away from situations where people might do or say something that you don't agree with, and and not force yourself to be somewhere that you don't want just because it's family or friends or situations like that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and sometimes we're caught off guard, right? So maybe this holiday season, we're not expecting some of these things, but they will, they happen. And so it's okay if we're caught off guard to have that kind of frozen moment, but right. Once it, once you make sense of it, it's okay to excuse yourself. It's okay to say, maybe this isn't the best space for me. Right. Yeah. Um, or, or can I just say, you know, I felt that that was inappropriate to say. I mean, you, you know, the person was may have doing it out of the kindness of their heart, but would that be something like, can you say to them about the inappropriateness? How do you deal with that when you're in an, in an appropriate situation and you want to be acceptable to the individual, uh, but yet communicate your feelings? Well thinking about what you can control, right? So, and what are you trying to achieve? So it's case by case. This individual, if you had said something like, hey, that really hurt my feelings. If you could not make comments about my weight, what do you think their reaction would be? Uh, Knowing that person, I don't care. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) So we wouldn't get anywhere with that, right? Right. That would that would that wouldn't get us anywhere. So yeah. maybe the option is again excusing ourselves, or next time saying, you know, again, like I I don't want to hear comments about my weight, and if if I do, then you know I may leave early. But again, that's something you can control. Yeah. So you have to decide that. Don't expound the energy if it's not going to go anywhere, if you're not going to be able to achieve the person to really listen to what you have to say. That's why I love the excusing yourself. Mm-hmm. That gives you the power to just say, you know what, I just choose not to be in this environment. You know, now there are some funny reels that I know many of us have seen about uh, folks sitting at the at the Thanksgiving table and auntie asking, you know, about the man and then the the, the person clapping back and saying, so what are you on man number 10 now or? <laughs> you gonna pay off that bad credit or you know <laughs> so it's you know but they're funny but it's that reminder that like let's not throw stones in a glass house here yeah you know now that's a nasty way to deal with it right um but sometimes we can make light of it or make a joke of it if we'd like 
But ultimately, if you if you feel like you don't want to engage in that, just excuse yourself, yeah. especially this person, you know, just doesn't care. I, I, one other thing I'm going to say, how do how do I as an individual regroup from that? Because if someone says something I don't like, even though I may not m openly say something mentally, it might have hurt and disturbed me. How do I regroup from that where I don't allow it to linger into my soul? You definitely want to journal about it and process it with someone that you feel safe with. Um, why did it bother me? Is there a part of me that feels like I do need to lose some weight and that's really been on my heart? Is that why it bothered me? Does it bother me because I feel like this person never thinks I'm good enough and I never feel good enough around this person? It's never gonna be enough. It makes me feel like I lack. So once we know the reason why it bothers us, then we can figure out what we wanna do about that. Do I wanna, maybe I do, it has been on my heart to lose some weight. So maybe, you know what? This was on my wake up call to, to make some changes, some small changes. Or maybe I've been seeking validation from this person year after year and I'm, it's, I'm never getting it. So how do I heal from that? How do I heal from that? What do I need to do to heal from that? Do I need to send them a letter about how I feel and my boundaries? Do I need to minimize my time around that person? Do I really need to get to the core why I need this person's validation? Because like you said earlier, you know, there's people that don't like you. All of us, we live long enough. There's going to be somebody on this earth that doesn't like us. Yeah. It doesn't matter what we do. They're just not going to like us. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Because we're not here for man, right? Uh -huh. True. I'm going to start writing my letter right now. Dear Brenda. No. I did not like <laughs> it was not me okay. who said that. Okay. But you know what? On a realm of what we're talking about, I really do believe when people, some people you could read them and they don't know how to say things in a nice way, but I don't think it was an intent hurt when a person said that it was, uh, it came out of I'm concerned because as he was talking about his cancer earlier, that mm -hmm. person's concern, you know, with the weight affect and bother that. But it's just not what you say is how you say it. Don't use my analogy. That's everyone's analogy. So that's the, um, like I said, the reason why I believe that person said that. But you're but, still using my analogy. Okay, pick your own. You could talk to okay. Nessie later. Okay? I'm just saying, pick your own. <laughs> Don't use my analogy. Pick your own. I mean, I can speak for myself. I don't, but shoes, you, you know, say you need do to I, do I, is it okay for me to excuse myself right now? Come on, get out of here. I can run this I mean, down. no, I mean, because you, you using my stuff here. In all seriousness, you know, it's the holidays are very difficult for a lot of people in certain things. Yeah. Uh, but having someone that you can actually talk to uh, is very helpful. And so, Leslie, if someone's looking to contact you, how would they be able to do that? Yes, so we are expanding at Healing Circle. Um, we're new going, people coming in. Yeah, I see that. Yes, we're getting some new people coming in. We're going to have some more training, robust training happening. Um, we're going to be doing some low cost therapy options for people as well to make therapy more affordable. So definitely check out our website, which is healing circle.org. Um, you can check out everything that we have to offer. We've got a group coming up for adolescents this winter in the new year. Um, if you have an adolescent who's struggling with anxiety, especially during COVID times, we'll be doing a hybrid. So these, um, the group will actually be workshops. So some of the workshops will be in person and some of them will be virtual. So if you're listening and you think I have an adolescent who really needs to have some time with some other adolescents, talk about anxiety, to talk about COVID, to talk about fostering healthy relationships. We have that information on our site. Um, you can always reach out to us or our admin, get more information. Um, we can offer therapy virtually. We can also help you find, if you wanna do in-person in your local area, we can help you find that as well. Um, Healing Circle is all about healing the community. So if you're listening and you're thinking, I've always wanted to do therapy and I have no idea where to start, you can give us a call and I'd be more than happy or one of my team members to kind of walk you through what that counseling journey looks like. 
Hmm. Is this your busy time right now? So it fluctuates. So the fall, we had a really surge of clients. Hmm. Then it kind of came down. We're starting to get another surge. Um, usually, though, around the Christmas holiday, that'll kind of come down because people will be taking time off. And then in the new year, it will just surge again. So, yes, this is one of our busy times of the year. So I, I got a, a comment, in, and I think we were talking about, uh, you know, emotions with men and how we, we, we can just, you know, go past things. Like I said, I, I didn't care. And it was saying that that's men in general. We can dismiss things real quick, dismiss our emotions, which is so true because, you know, we're trained to be uh, taught to be tough and you know deal with things and don't let anything bother us and so uh, one of the questions i was going to ask you as well was um do you have separate classes for men because you're talking about adolescents and i'm just gonna be honest when it comes to men opening up their emotions they're like we're like adolescents we just don't you, you we don't want to do that how you doing fine okay no yeah i mean we're and it's very hard for us to open up so are there classes that strictly help with men or deal with men issues that they can contact you about as well? Well, currently I have some resources for that, some virtual yeah. resources. We do not currently have a group for men or a workshop for men that we're starting. However, with this new staff that we're bringing in, I really want to look into bringing a mix of people with a lot of different backgrounds. And that would be something that I would love to do. We are going to be doing a woman's uh, workshop series as well. Um, but to your point, I think it's really important and powerful if we're going to do a male group to have a male run the group. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> um, and so that once once we get that in place, uh, once we have a male figure that can do run those workshops, that is something that I definitely need to get up and running. So more to come on that. Yeah. I mean, because it, it's needed because, you know, Women are very easily can share their emotions and feelings. Men lock down like you're trying to get into Fort Knox. I mean, there's if there's there's there could be like one million six hundred and fifty five different combinations to get into a man's emotions because no, well, no, I don't really feel that way, you know. And when I did say I didn't care, I I didn't care, but that didn't care was a a fence on what I did care about. And so it was blocking that. And so we always kind of do that with our emotions. Like, hmm, you know, I mean, and as a black man, you learn how to not to care in this world sometimes. <laughs> but that's yeah. a different statement. That's a different stuff, topic for a different story. But uh, I appreciate you doing that because, I mean, if, if there's people who need counseling and therapy more, our men need to be there getting that as well because – they just they they feel it's a shame, but it's a shame that we don't. Absolutely, um, and I would say, um, them. You know, if you're listening and you're a guy and you're thinking, well, I'm. I think Healing Circle's great, or you know, I know some some spaces that are great, but I'm looking for a male group and you can't find it. Start off with that individual therapist. You yeah. know, um. There's still a lot of magic that can happen in that individual therapy experience. And furthermore, it can help you when you are in that group to really understand yourself a little bit better and contribute in that space. Yeah. And I do believe, you know, you agree with you with the, if there's going to be a men's group, a man should should be there. But gentlemen, if you do want to talk about something that is emotionally troubling to you or you're having some issues, talking to Leslie, it, it's it's about as best as talking to anyone else. She's practical, honest, trustworthy, uh, and that's why she's on this show. Uh, that it's without without question. That's why she's on this show. Uh, Very and so knowledgeable, you know, informative. Yeah. Okay. Just take some of my things too. Just you know, you're always trying to get off of what I'm saying. Just leave it alone, girl. It's beating up Brenda. I you just know. don't understand. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you need counseling. I do need counseling. <laughs> I'm I'm coming to you now, mm -hmm. uh, but. I appreciate it. You got some last thing you want to say, Brenda? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say I'm going to miss her for the month of December, but I'm going to welcome her in the month of January, right when our first guest, she said? Yes. Okay. Can't um, wait. Okay. I can't wait because you be on top of everything. And I just want to say 
happy holidays to you. And even though you are the therapist and everything during this time for you, like I said earlier, I am praying for you because I, I read a little bit about dad. He was spectacular. I'm like, oh, okay, then. I'm proud of you and your sister hanging Thank in you. there and handling everything, okay? Yeah. Thank so you. So once again, tell us about how people get in contact with you. Yes, go on to our site, healing-circle.org. You can see all the new stuff we're having, our newsletter, the fun things we do with our clients, our new staff that's coming, the workshops that we have coming up. I would hope by the new year, maybe mid-year, we maybe have some men workshops and some things happening as well. Um, and if you're just curious and you want to ask questions, just call us or email us. We can set up a quick consultation. It's free. It's free. It's free. So just call us. Let us know what's on your mind. Let us know what resources you need. And we're here to help. All right. And I promise I for the new year, I won't beat up on Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that would not happen. You know, she, I mean, if you saw how she treated me off air. <laughs> right. Lord have mercy. Wait, let me get my bed Ooh. and bash them upside and say it in I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, how she treats me. I mean, I'm waiting for that man's class for sure. I need it. <laughs> I, I need it. You do. A T. A T. Okay. I will let you get out of here before I start acting too much like a fool. <laughs> All right. Well, see you guys Always a pleasure. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. It's always great talking with Leslie Harley, uh, one of our counselors that we have here. Um, 2024, we're going to do some things different. We're going to have people coming on to the show. Uh, we've got a, I'm trying to see if I can get a, a, a lawyer um, that uh, we talked to when we were here at the Black Wall Street. Mm, Smitty, you won't here. We want April. I already got the information. See, I, I contacted Smitty. That's my boy, too. And mm -hmm. he gave it to me right away. So I got the telephone number from him. I'm going to contact her. Uh, Smitty's going to be with us during the uh, month of February. Uh, we've already got some of the titles that we're going to be working with him on. Uh, Smitty's one of the persons that... Um, has a card blanche to just contact us and let us know when he wants to be on the show because he's always very knowledgeable and provides great things. And Smitty also uh, has guests that he gives us some time to time so he can do that as well. I think Brenda wants to say something while I I'm talking, before. but I'm going to keep talking. And you know, you're going to say we're running out of time. And you know, I'm, I'm going to finish up what I got to say. But what do you want to say now, Ms. Brennan? I want to say, speaking of Smitty, when he was on here the second Tuesday of this month, he brought on the phenomenal Cayenne Wafer. She won third place in a titanium women's bodybuilding competition in the transformation category. So congratulations to her. That body transformation was awesome. Yeah. And I did like the fact, I mean, this, this young lady is somewhat partially blind. Uh, and yet uh, she uses that that situation to you know encourage others uh, to do great things and um, I appreciate and, and, and respect and love anyone who's going to take you know something that can stop them and motivate them and she's that but we'll have Smitty on here with us in uh, 2024 uh, period and we're gonna be talking about uh, in December I'm gonna play some Christmas music probably close to the Christmas holiday but December, we're going to kind of talk about the Let's Stay Together talk show, the format, and um, how we do things here, which is kind of totally different. We're not just coming on here saying, thus thou, scriptures and everything like that. Uh, you know, I'm a preacher, and so I love preaching, but that's that's not the call for this. And, and why is this calling for this show so different? You know, it's almost like a any kind of uh, radio show. We laugh and joke and have fun. But the whole thing is always about allowing Christians to be human as well as Christians, but still following the word of God. We, we are the examples of righteousness, and so we should be the example of joy, happiness, uh, and we should be also the examples of people who go through issues but yet know that we can always count on God. So we're going to talk about that in the 2024 season. Hey, we're going to go right now. Demarcus Kelly, hallelujah, and then we're going to come with C.C. Whining, C. C. Whining uh, for uh, Holy Forever. We're going to have a couple of commercials, and we'll be right back. This is Rick McCain along with my baby, my girl, my boo. We'll be right back after these songs and commercial breaks. Kenny? 
Are we off? <laughs> We're going to keep on talking. Uh, let me say this. I don't. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so we got to keep up. We're off of the off the radio now. So what's the topics we have over here? Okay, let's talk about this Jamie Fox um, situation. He was accused of sexual assault in oh, no. a new lawsuit. What? Now this alleged incident, babe, took place in 2015 at Cash NYC, a popular New York City restaurant, according to the complaint. Um, obtained by CNN. Now, what's interesting, she went after him in 2015, and now she's coming back in 2020. I mean, she's really gunning for him, money, 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 money. saying that he inappropriately touched her, um, groped her, mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. wow, it didn't, mm -hmm. they dismissed it before. Mm -hmm. And now you're coming back trying to get something, I don't know, a payout or what. Boom, 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 What's your thoughts boom, on that? Boom, 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 oh, boom, the money, money, boom, money. Boom, That's what boom, you're singing over there. Now, she went to court before and the judge dismissed it. Mm -hmm. Because obviously they probably didn't have enough information on there to prove uh, the case. Now, you know, you can dismiss without prejudice, which means you can bring the situation back again. Uh, he never went through a trial. And so it seems like this is an individual who is trying to maybe get some money out of the situation. You know, it's, it's, you would hope that the judge in itself, where the situation is so, you know, critical or, you know, as rape, you don't, you know, it's a serious situation that you want to deal with as, you know, as serious as possible. And you want to make sure you gather all the information that's attainable to make sure that this is something that can be a case. With that said, hoping that that was done, if he dismissed the case and uh, now she's trying to bring it back, you would hope that she has enough information or valid information <coughs> to prove her point, and it does not look like it's just some kind of a money situation. Now, as you can tell, Diddy just went through a situation like that and got some money. So who knows if she saw that and says, hey, I need to try this again. Or somebody's in the head saying, you need to try this again against Jamie. Uh, it, it, there's always people out there trying to throw something out there to damage your name just for the love of money. And we, I'm hoping that this situation is not it. I, for me, would say that if someone did something like that, I would go after them to prosecute them and put them in jail for lying and fraud and trying to steal because you're not going to be able to just do that against me and I'm just going to say, oh, you know, just, just let it go away. No. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the name that I have produced is important to me. And so when you do something like that, you, 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 you better have some good proof because my goal is to put you in jail for lying and set you up as an example. It does say Mr. Fox intends to pursue a claim for malicious prosecution against this person and her attorneys for refiling this frivolous action. And the best proof is the camera. If someone caught that on camera, because I know if they get it on camera, it's, it's a cold case then it's just over we see what you're doing for her to say that he grabbed in this restaurant now groped her her breasts and her genitals i'm like her genitals oh okay so and now she's trying to sue the, the restaurant as well babe yeah i mean and i mean you know the the bad one of the bad things about the united states is you could pretty much put a lawsuit out there for anything if you pay the money and put it out there that you know, you you know, they you can put it out there, and that's that's one of the bad things about us because we're one of these places you can just put a lawsuit for anything. You know, oh. I'm suing this person for this, I'm suing this person for that, I'm suing this person, and then it kind of bogs up the court system dealing with all these frivolous cases that people are just trying to see that if they do this, will that person bend or waver and say, hey, I don't know what information you got, but you know, let's uh, file a confidentiality agreement and I'll give you some money and hoping that that bluff will uh, will get them what they want 
Now, the problem that I have with this is that r with rape or doing something like that being so serious of a violation against a woman, it's not something you should play with like that. Mm -hmm. If it did not happen to you, you you're, you're hurting other women who have had serious and validity to their case by someone like you putting it in there. Now, it shouldn't hurt it, but it does. This is the world we live in, you know. Mm -hmm. It can hurt that because it makes it look like the person is using it for, for greed instead of good. Yep. Another story here. Baptist pastor, Christian College president. Say what? Apologizes for allowing male speaker with long hair. I really didn't get what Pastor Wilkerson, why... Um, he chose to go off on that individual, David Litt. I think his name is David Litt. But, um, yes, he had a head full of hair, but he took it to the scriptures and said that that was uh, David Litty. He said that 1 Corinthians eleven fourteen says, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Now, the thing that gets me... Who didn't do their homework before they asked this young man to speak? Because he's always had his long hair. You should have did the due diligence and knew who he was, which that's why he's apologizing, because he didn't do it. And the church was quite upset that this hippie, as they call him, got up there and spoke. I mean, number one, you're talking about the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, because this is Old Testament information. We live under grace dispensation, you know, the New Testament laws. I mean, the, if you go by all Old Testament laws, I mean, heck, all of us have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does say something about long hair. Uh, but, I mean, my goodness, what does that got to do with him speaking his hair? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like... I'm, I hate to say this, but it's just it's, it's just as simple and simplistic and stupid as hating somebody for the color of their skin. Uh, you can't try. You can't use the Bible out of context for something that you want to do. You know, the Bible is not something you use as a backing to do. He had long hair, so you know they're looking for something. What can we find wrong with this person? Uh, you know, that biblically we could throw on there. And then they come up with long hair from the Old Testament. Yeah. I'm like, okay. This is a church that I would probably, if I was there and saw something like that, I would immediately leave that church uh, because they are really uh, not following uh, the Word of God as we walk through the New Testament he, of the Bible. He blatantly said, this young man, David Litchie, disobeyed God's word. Yeah. Should have a, he should have alerted everyone to his spiritual discernment and that he is to be disqualified to teach people all because of his hair. So now you hear all of that. You know one thing you didn't hear them say? Mm -hmm. If he cuts his hair. Uh, I mean, even though this is stupid as possible, they could have said, if he wants to teach here... We want him to cut his hair, uh -huh. but they all—he's done all this wrong. He—he's not fine. He's not doing it. Okay, so what if he cut his hair? I mean, you know, you—you're not thinking about that. That's simply, even though it's, as asinine as that is, you're gonna try to find all these things to to vilify this man instead of just saying, "We're a church that believes that a man sh should not speak if he has long hair." Asinine as that is, at least that's your church's, you know, your church's, you know, doctrine. Uh, and and it just be somewhere that I can make the decision I don't want to go to. But they never said anything about cutting his hair. They're vilifying the guy like he's done something sinful, uh -huh. which is silly. This is why sometimes you, you, you got to know who you're listening to and where you're going. Because just because it's a church and it's got a cross and a claim Jesus doesn't mean that they're following him. Amen to this, but another, how much time do we have? I don't, Kenny, what are we doing on time? Okay, I guess we've got enough time. I don't know. I wonder if we're losing, Kenny. 
Mm. Well, one of the stories in Cheat Comeback is Soul Food fans react to Michael Beach asking them to choose between five okay. Minutes, okay, choose between Cherry and Cousin Faith. This was quite interesting. <laughs> he wanted to know who you got and why. Was Miles right or wrong for hooking up with Cherry's cousin, Faith? <laughs> Um, that they moved into the house. I think you know. I think that they um, they have um, a lot of people make comments on that. I'll, I'll just quickly say that you're married. Right. You know, you you, you 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 know, you shouldn't be with should be with your wife. I understand temptation in the movie Soul Food. You know, Faith did look much more sexually appealing than um, what was the other Terry did, uh, and of course, you know, the movie set it up that way. And, you know, temptation can cause you to do things. Uh, but, you know, when, you, when you're following God, you have to fight off those temptations. And uh, though you, you know, that person may look alluring and, and desirable to you, you need to replace those desires into your own spouse. You know, it made me think about the movie when the Vivica Fox role said, Faith, you're always running. Just stay. It didn't happen to you, Vivica Fox Roll. It well, didn't happen. Vivica stole, stole her, uh, right. Terry's man. So it make you wonder, <laughs> like, really? You wouldn't have her up in your house like that and been okay with it. You could stay. Darlings. Home. You, you would never my be my husband. <laughs> okay, I'm like, shh. You won't be here. It's like, no, we're not going to do that. So what are some of the comments they was making in there? Oh, even, yeah. um, what's the name for Mary Mary rolled in there and made a comment. Uh, some of the comments were from Mary Mary. Ruffling paper. We still mad at Cousin Faith. Yeah, we are still mad at that. And the one that tickled me the most said that um, it's still too soon, bruh. Now you know we just started forgiving your bleep bleep. And you go and post this bleep bleep. Because, you know, we was mad at him for a long time, too. And fans reminded Beach that they had a real life run in and his actions over his actions and stuff so it's like he's claiming that his ex-wife and his present wife we're all living together y'all crazy that that would not happen and you know it's just interesting it's like basically don't trust your cousin yeah um this movie came out in 1997 mm -hmm. y'all still upset with the brother All right, everybody, welcome back to Let's Stay Together Talk Show. Your host, Reverend Rick McCain, along with my baby, my girl, my boo. I want to talk about that for like about maybe maybe three-fourths minutes with the thing that uh, Michael Beach put out there about Soul Food. So quickly wrap that up so we can kind of talk about that. Okay, Soul Food fans react to Michael Beach asking them to choose between his wife on the show, Cherry, and her cousin, Faith. As you know... He slept with the cousin Faith as Terry moved to wayward cousin into the house to help her out. Faith seemed to help herself out to a little more than just food and lodging and slept with her husband. He want to know who you got and why. Was Miles right or wrong? I definitely say, Miles, you know you're wrong. Don't, don't even try to spin that. So it's interesting. I think what Kenny was telling you moved you to Mike. It seems funny now that my mic is very loud and yours is it. So uh, we got to try to figure out. Loud or low? It's just yours is low and mine's is much louder than yours, but just make sure you're close to your mic. Um, I think I said easily that be close to your mic. Speak close to your mic. That's all you need to know. Uh, <laughs> I think I said this earlier that, you know, you're married, stick with your wife. I, but we were talking about this. Some people were saying that they still having a problem they're still mad at him about that situation. And I'm laughing. I'm like, not it was a movie, you know, and it happened in 1997. Uh, I'm looking at it here, you know, it was a 1997. What is that? Like, you know, close to 27 years ago or something like that? I don't know. That's a long time. Uh, and you're still upset about that? Well, I think they just playing off the world. It's like, no, nah, brother, you know you shouldn't go there. We still mad at you for doing that like that i don't think they're taking it seriously I, I i was wondering was there something about this 26 years i was wondering if it's something about this where they were um 
something's coming up where they're bringing it up. Because why would you bring that up now? Oh. Is that some kind of a sequel or something that's going to come up that's going to be talking about this? Um, I know they were saying that this is, somebody said this is like a, a big movie for the holiday seasons, which I've never remember Soul Food being a holiday season movie. Really? Uh, I don't. Oh. I mean, I, when did it come? I don't even know when it came out. Did it come out during the holidays? Um, so I'm, I'm looking at this, and then it doesn't really say the date that it came out. It just says 1997. Um, but, okay, it's a great holiday movie. Maybe that's what it is, but it's just, I was wondering, was there going to be anything else coming from that, uh, the reason why he brought this out now. I'm thinking he's trying to stay relevant because, as I mentioned earlier, that he's starring in Kingdom Business and his personality, that character he played in Soul Food, kind of mirrors him cheating in this new um, um, nighttime show that he's in. Yeah, okay. September 26, 97, when this movie came out. Thank you, Kenny. Uh, and so um, it wasn't around the holidays then, so I don't know why it became a a, a holiday movie. Uh, but then um, uh, there's a lot of holiday movies that I understand. I want to know if anybody got a chance to see Thanksgiving. That's what I want to know. That that movie where the the, the pilgrim was killing everybody. Um, <laughs> if you did get a chance to see that movie, <laughs> get on our it? Facebook and and kind of let us know Isn't what you thought true? about it. I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, uh, the pilgrims. Oh, killing, killing people? people. Okay, you're uh -huh. being you're being facetious. Historically, I see now. Yes. <laughs> uh, but here's the raffling of that paper again, Kenny. Um, we're gonna get this girl to learn on the, in a month. He ain't complaining to me. Tell me what to do for next year. Who ain't complaining to you, Kenny? Oh, he he ain't had to complain for you. That's my job. You in I'm in the complaint department. You're in therapy. <laughs> I'm in the yeah. I'm in the therapy complaint department. Mm -hmm. But um, we're gonna go on. You know, y'all just gotta excuse us. We're just you know old husband and wife that fussing on on the show and let you know what. Look at this, my God! Can you? I mean, can we can we ban you from paper? I think we gotta ban you from. I mean, I ain't never seen somebody that just can't seem to find a way to. Put things in order so you don't have to keep ruffling papers. Mm, it'd be all right for next year. Okay. You want to do let's play now? Let's let's play, I guess, because <laughs> we're playing with paper. Let's play with the theaters. Um, this is the holiday season, and last Sunday we had two good ones with um, a Christmas Carol. I didn't get your rating for the second one, but the first one's Manual Cinema's Christmas Carol. We gave it three stars, and that's at Writer's Theater, and it'll be playing into December the 24th. So I want to again say something uh, that we need to start doing is that we're, the plays that we do are in the Chicagoland area, so we do have people that listen to SOAR Radio in different locations, states, and stuff like that, and so we apologize if you're not aware about that, but we are critics here in the Chicagoland area. We do go to, in cases, uh, Wisconsin, Indiana, and we have went to New York. Hopefully we'll do that again next year. Uh, but these are some of the plays that you will see if you come to the Chicagoland area. And uh, Manual Cinema Christmas Carol is, I gave it three stars. I, I really enjoyed it. it it's, it's puppetry, uh, and they do um, projection screens. They're really moving these animals uh, these are uh, these uh, animated uh, people through a screen and you look at it on a big screen and it's so you know it they do it so well uh, I mean they're 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 master the skill of putting that together and, and that it is just so unbelievably um, shocking when you see that because it's almost like I mean they're standing right in front of you too while they're doing this mm -hmm. and it's so amazing you kind of get caught up in just them doing that. Uh, but they they did an excellent job. The story is about this young lady by the name of Trudy, Aunt Trudy, whose husband, Joe, dies, and he used to do the, you know, the Christmas Carol, on, you know, puppetry on there, and now she's trying to do it, and going through her trials and tribulations of losing her husband and all the struggles she's going through, she becomes a modern-day Scrooge herself, and then goes through the situation of 
trying to find forgiveness and love all over again. So it was it was it was really good. I really enjoyed uh, how they kind of put that together, and that's why I gave it three stars. What's your thoughts? Um, I didn't like it as much as you did. I'm more traditional with the next one we'll be talking about, but it was entertaining. It's just that I'm looking at the big screen, <laughs> looking at her doing it. It just was a lot to me, and I was just like staying focused to just what's on the stage with big people doing everything. But it was cute. I can't say that. But moving back downtown to Goodman Theater, A Christmas Carol, oh, that is playing to December the 31st. Now, that's one that I was just always enthralled with, just loving to see it on the big stage, all of um, the scenic things. You said it wasn't as technical this time? No, it wasn't. They had a situation one time they used like a like technical cinema, uh, which was really kind of spooky and, and, and exciting because, you, you, you know, you're able to see a lot of things, you know, like it was a ghost in the mirror or the knocker really mm. came to life. And you saw that it, on it did. there. It did. It can't. It, they did it kind of flash, but they didn't do it the same way they did. But I did like this production. Larry Yardo, uh, who plays uh, yeah. Ebenezer Scrooge, has got to be the universal best Scrooge ever. Uh-huh. I mean, he plays that um, that uh, position, uh, that person to perfection. And uh, that other guy. Yeah, the guy that played um, Bob Cratchit, uh-huh. um, and I think his name is Thomas. Um, Cot, if I'm not mistaken, uh, does an excellent job with that. They they bring in different people, and, but it is if you're in the Chicagoland area, one of the plays you definitely want to see with your children uh, would be the Christmas Carol. Now, Manuel's Christmas Carol and uh, Glencoe, your kids may not you may not want to go there because it's got some some language in there that. You know, the girl does get a little bit languagely, <laughs> which is really not a word, but she does kind of get a look, say some things that you don't want your child to hear. But uh, the Christmas Carol at Goodman, uh, which is, you know, always a good family outing. You definitely want to take your child in. So if you're thinking about coming to the Chicagoland area, you live in the Chicagoland area and you want to do something that would be fun for the family. I mean, they've got, you know, places you can go. And uh, Shakespeare, you know, a Shakespeare, not Shakespeare, Navy Pier, mm-hmm. where they show things like that. But if it's something you want to go for a family outing, um, seeing the Christmas Carol is the place to go. How many stars? Four stars. Four stars. Now, tomorrow we get to review The Wiz at Cadillac Palace. I'm hoping that they bring it, bring it, bring it, and if we are report, well, we won't report. Well, we can report back, but hopefully this will be a, a good one because it's anticipated, much anticipated with us. And I know where is African American going to show up and show out. Yeah, I well, definitely hope to get a chance to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, there's a couple of things. Hey, before we go on, I'm going to throw in a quick uh, song here, uh, and then we're going to come back and finish up the. Uh, information we have there we're going to have jonathan McReynolds and abel featuring uh um marvin wayne waning wayne whining jesus what is wrong with me today whinings uh and then we're just going to play that song so kenny i just want that song to play and then we'll come right back all right everybody so um yeah definitely be in chicagoland area that is a good play uh that you want to go see it's um you know this guy just does an excellent job on that. And, uh, you know, it's it's a wonderful Christmas production. I mean, they have other things down there that if you're just a family, uh, you know, a, you're like a husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, they got the magic show that's uh, right uh, downtown as well. I can't remember where the, I can't remember what that location was called, but it's right next to the Goodman Theater. I'd have to look the it up. The Magic Lounge? Yeah, the Magic Lounge, yeah. Uh, it's right there next, you know, kind of, like a maybe a, you know go north or south I should the corner of, of where uh, Goodman is and they have some great things there um you know Chicago is just a good place to be doing the Christmas area time and uh, they've got some wonderful things that are happening you're going to have the Wiz Betty Boop is coming out Woo! um and so there's a good a good things that are going to be out for a while mm-hmm. and uh the car- the Christmas carol will be out until the 31st 
So you can even see that the day after Christmas with your kids or even Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know, but um, Cass probably like, really, uh, we need a day too. Yeah. I don't know. If I, I, I didn't check to see if they were open on Christmas Eve. They're probably, they're probably, you know, probably is. I know that um, Burger King over here is open on Christmas and Christmas Eve. <laughs> So those are going to be some terrible hamburgers indeed, boy. Um, um, but, yeah, you got any quick story you want to throw out real quick? Uh, when people leave Illinois, they mostly go to three different states. And this was a shock one to me. Yeah, and the reason people are fleeing is because not the weather, but the taxes are extremely high. And at one point, you know, people are leaving uh, California, New York, Texas, and Florida. I mean, it's like you just think we'd be flocking to the warmer weather, but sometimes things get a little, a little tight. So I know. Let me just do this one last time, and I'll be good. Jesus. So um, the states that they're flocking to, oh, let's see, Wisconsin, which was interesting to me, Wisconsin. Um, oh wait a minute, California. No, they're going to Wisconsin's. Indiana, they have it down there. They're going to. Oh, yeah, yeah, these people. Only thing I see is the Wisconsin. They're going to Wisconsin, Indiana, and I think another one, I can't, I got to look at the paper on that, but they had it down there. Wisconsin, Indiana, and um, let me oh. see. I don't have that copy of that paper, but you they should have it on there. I see it on here, but I see the states that they're um, not going to. <laughs> Uh, you didn't grab uh, the information on there, but it's Chicago. I know it's it's in the, it's Indiana, Wisconsin, and I can't remember what the other one was. But then there, there are areas that's close to Chicago, which was shocking to me because you you would figure that you want to go somewhere warm. They're not leaving Chicago just because it's cold. Uh, they're leaving Chicago because of the taxes, and so. Uh, I'd have to go look back. Yeah, it is Florida. Uh, I don't think Florida was one of them that they were this going to. This is better job opportunities and no state Was it Florida? Tax. Let me see. Uh, but I knew the two of them was like surprising uh, that they, um, they're they doing that. Uh, is the other one Florida? Uh -huh. I guess. Yeah, it, it, says, it says California. I don't know about Florida. Says about twenty five thousand former Illinoisans headed to California. So then, but it's just interesting that you you know that I, you would go to Indiana or Wisconsin uh, because the taxes are lower. Um, and um, we uh, five minutes away from Indiana. We yeah. don't want to live there. No, that's not. To, I mean, Indianapolis is nice though. You can go to the Indianapolis. It's a nice Isn't metropolitan. Nice? It was a big metropolitan city for, for Indiana, so it's not bad at all. Hey, we're about to get ready to go back on the air here on uh, Let's Sit Together the Talk Show. Uh, we're going to uh, be talking about um, um, why did I get married, relationship letter, and uh, then we should be ending again in a few minutes. All right, everybody, welcome back to Let's Sit Together the Talk Show. Your host, Reverend Rick McCain, along with my baby, my girl, my boo, uh, paper paper shredder, uh, Brenda McCain over here. Uh, we are going to uh, be talking about some things. We you, hope you enjoyed that song by Jonathan Reynolds, Abel featuring uh, Marvin uh, Winans. Um, and uh, we're going to go on. we got a, about a good 10 minutes here. We're going to talk about um, two sub su subjects. What do you, what you want to go to? I know you got to go uh, Club 50, blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's, let's rattle through this. Okay, Club 50, some great articles out there. Next month in December, I will be interviewing um, Cayenne Wafer. She was on the show a couple of weeks ago, bodybuilder and legally blind. We will be interviewing her, Club 50. If you want to catch up on some articles, go to theclub50.com. Ife Designs, we in it, about to ride it out for the holiday season. You need some special Christmas cards made, posters or whatever for Christmas and um, New Year's, your invites. 
contact me. I'm your girl to get that done. And I'm about to move right along to the relationship letter. Good? Um, go to, um, why did I get married? Let's talk about that real quick. And then uh, we can go into that. Make a noise. Hold on. Okay. Why did I get married? <laughs> Topic. Love you, but I'm not in love with you. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so... <laughs> I, you know, this is something that Brenda said to me one time that we would talk about when we were young in a relationship, and it really bothered me. And I didn't bring this up because it bothers me. I'm bringing it up because it's something that happens in a relationship. When we were younger with each other, she made this comment one time and said, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And I really thought that that was, you know, a terrible thing to say, you know, with someone. Um, but... If we're honest with each other, there are things in our marriage relationship that makes us not be in love with that person for a, a day or season or a period because they will do things that will hurt you or trouble you or disturb you or bother you uh, that will cause you not to be in love with that person. It doesn't necessarily mean that you don't love them, but in all honesty, us being different individuals, there will be things that people will do like ruffling papers that will make you not want to be in love with happens. that individual. And, you know, it, it, and, and they will use that. It happens for a reason that they shouldn't do. But what, you know, in serious nature, we, that happens sometimes where someone will do something. Uh, they may say something you into in a negative way. They may, um, not inform you about certain things that they're doing or be very, you know, inconsiderate, um, and, you know, not caring about your feelings. And in that moment in time, babe, you, you, that feeling of being in love with that person or wanting to be with that person subsides and you, you, you rather be away from them because the feelings that you have at that moment doesn't translate to something that you love at that moment. Speak. Oh, you was on the road here. I don't have too much to say with that since this wasn't me and you, so to speak, but that does happen in relationship. It's not always smiles and ooh, we, we, we doing this and that. Like I said, two different personalities. You can get on each other's nerves. And it's like, I ain't feeling you right now. I'm not doing the woes. I'm so in love, this, 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 and that. And say, like, but but duly no, I still love you. But at the moment, in relationships, it's not always that. And I think people have to realize that. That you have your emotional roller coaster in your relationship. You have different opinions, because I always say, when I heard this from someone, well, we never argue. I'm like, someone is controlling someone. And some couples don't argue, but when you put it so blankly, like, bluntly, that, oh, we never have arguments, I usually go along with this person. But it's like, how do you really feel? It's not That doesn't mean you have to have an argument, but stay in your ground, have your own opinions and stuff. Or you don't want to test the waters. I don't want the person thinking, I don't care for them. So you have to agree with them all the time. It doesn't work that way. So when you say that, it's not, you know, it could be harsh and hurtful. But know your relationship. You know, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Now, since you had that as a title, explain exactly what that is. And I'm, I'm just curious. How is it if you do have something to say about a conversation? Because you started off saying, I don't really have a lot to say about that. And then we got a five-minute dissertation. Well, hey, so I'm trying to figure cool. out what, what, when you really want to talk about something, what would we get? I think the thing that made me think about this is just, you know, situations. I think I was looking at, listening to someone on uh, the radio, some gospel thing on the radio. And it just made me think about, you know, how things can happen in your relationship that can cause, you know, issues. Now, we're probably not going to get to the relationship letter today as I look at the time. We'll try to get back to it. Uh, we, we, we may do it for the holidays. I don't know. But uh, we apologize for that. Uh, it's just that sometimes when people 
go through things there that if you're not honest with yourself you know certain things that happen in your relationship can destroy it if you sit there and not be honest and there are some times that you're not in love with the person uh, that you're with that just something that they do that you you know you, you don't love that they're doing that it's not that you don't love them and i think sometimes what we have to do to make sure that we stay in that in love scenario on a daily basis is that we need to you know continuously work on our communication you know um and sometimes you have to give each other space i was looking at this thing that this person was doing you can obviously tell us was done by a woman because she said play with him hug him put him first you know uh there's a lot of hymns in there no hers and i'm like okay this is you know tell him that you love him consult him i'm like okay this was by a woman <laughs> Uh, but I think that, you know, you, you have to spend quality time. There were some good things in here. You know, you have to, you know, tell each other that you love you. Consult, you know, communicate about things that you're going to do in a relationship. You know, um, show interest in what someone is doing. Uh, sometimes if, you're, if you, you're already showing interest about what you want to do and not what that other person wants to do, it can cause a person to have that, moment of saying you know i'm not loving this right now and you know and so you have to be very careful with that uh do not hold feelings against each other which is good have forgiveness love them unconditionally uh you know tell the compliment them these are some of the things you can do that can help with that situation when you're getting to a point where something happened in your relationship that is causing your feelings of love to be affected uh -huh. and that's basically what it is i mean those feelings of love can be affected to the point where you stop loving that person and these are some of the things that you can do to make sure you don't get there and it all starts off with just communicating talking you know like leslie said sometimes you got to excuse yourself from some things or say thank you i appreciate you telling me that and be you know be willing to listen to that person when they're telling you some things that they don't like and not combative where someone tells you something then you tell them something i mean that that really doesn't help because you're now trying to say well i didn't like what you did you didn't bring it up so if that person brought that up then you allow them to express their feelings and then if you have some feelings that are not associated with the feelings they shared well let me tell you some things how i feel that's not associated with coming back to that individual because that's what we do a lot of time. Well, tit for tat, and and you shouldn't do that. So get yourself prepared for the holiday seasons, twenty twenty four. Uh, you 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 love the person, you're not in love with them. Find ways to communicate and and work with each other so you don't get into that situation where you're not in love but you're falling in love all over again. Okay, bring the love back, huh? Yeah. So we got about a minute and a half here. You got anything last words you want to say? Um, just as a reminder, we will not be on Facebook next month, taking a holiday hiatus. But we will have We're not going to be on show. anything next month. We're, we're going to be on show radio. It's going to be pre-recorded. I'm sorry. Right, pre-recorded show. So I want to say happy holidays to everyone. Yeah. So happy we'll holidays. So back physically in a new year january 20 january the second and we'll be able to say happy new year to you after that hey we're gonna get out of here i'm gonna let uh, kenny play this last song that i got here probably only gonna be about 30 seconds but it was a a tribute to carol king a bb and cc whining uh from a tribute revisit album you've got a friend this is rick mccain along with my baby my girl my boo happy holidays to you and we see you in january 2024 on the second okay. Bye bye. Bye bye, family. All right. Hey, preview it here on uh, Facebook. Again, like Brenda said, we will not be doing any um, communicating on Facebook uh, for the December period. Uh, we're just going to be doing uh, recorded, pre recorded things that we're going to give to Kenny uh, for the holidays. We will have that last week right around Christmas. We're going to be just going to be playing Christmas music. I'm just going to send Kenny all of my Christmas music. We might talk in between that a little bit too, so we'll see. And just, you know, uh, but we'll, we'll figure that out. But thank you all for being a part of our 2023 season. 
uh, please come back with us next year uh, to share with us. We're going to be extending it from 7 to 9, and we're going to have some different shows. I'm going to talk about that, but we're going to have some different shows. And I'm looking for someone who may want to talk about at the end of January about the abortion rights. We're going to be talking about that. 2024 is going to have um, the, the, this is a presidential candidacy year, and that is going to be one of the top topics that women are going to be talking about in the 2024 election. And we want to have some people on the show uh, that has opinions about uh, abortion, the rights of abortion, and what we should do state by state. So we're going to talk about that, and uh, that's going to be one of our roundhouse discussions we're going to have. And I think it's going to be very powerful. So get prepared for that. Mm-hmm. And uh, hey, we'll see you guys in uh, 2024, January the 2nd at 7 p.m. See you then.